This brief presentation on the literary elements in The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton will help you to understand this week's reading assignment so that you can discuss it in depth in our two discussion forums. You must use at least one direct quote from the literary work and at least one direct quote from a literary expert in the four discussion posts that you write each week. The recommendations for further study folder will help you start your research. Let's begin the presentation with the author's background. Edith Wharton was born into an old money family in New York in 1862, so she lived an affluent lifestyle. Her family traveled in Europe due to US the U.S. financial situation following the Civil War. She married Teddy Wharton in 1885. It was a difficult relationship because he, like her mother, did not respect her intellectual and artistic interests. She spent time living and traveling in Europe. She made her final visit in 1923 to the U.S., where she was awarded an honorary doctorate at Yale University, the first woman ever to receive such an honor. Her major works include The House of Mirth and Age of Innocence. She died at age 75 in 1937. The setting is the Gilded Age, and that is generally thought of to be 1876 to 1901. The place is mainly New York City, the city itself and surrounding areas where the wealthy people would have their uh, places they would spend time in the summer or on the weekends. The uh, Mediterranean and the European areas are also important, especially in Book 2. The cultural assumptions are the inferiority of new money, similar to what we've seen, for example, with Jane Austen. The fragility of old money, so again, it's that same mindset. And once again, like Austen, women as possessions. The financial uh, aspects are very important in this novel, and that would be a part of the setting. The historical aspects uh, deal with the finance, finances, the situation leading up to the stock market crash in 1929. The characters are, of course, Lily Bart. She's an Im impoverished, aging beauty obsessed with marrying a wealthy man to maintain her social status. At the beginning of the novel, she's 29, and this is similar to Anne Elliot. There's a limited window uh, when these women can get married. Otherwise, they're considered to be too old. Lawrence Selden is a lawyer who's capable of socializing in these affluent circles, but he lacks the means to marry a socialite. He and Lily seem to be in love, but they both understand that he would not be able to support her in the lifestyle that she would like. The Dorsets and the Trinners are two married couples who seem to offer friendship to Lily, but instead they use her and betray her. For example, Bertha invites her to go on the Mediterranean cruise on their yacht, but uh, it's only to conceal an affair that she's having with Ned Silverton. And when that doesn't work out for Bo uh, Bertha, she just uh, dismisses Lily, uh, leaves her, and just says, you can't go back on the, the yacht. So that's a crisis, a financial crisis for Lily, because her Aunt Edith isn't giving her enough money to do the things that uh, the friends in her social circle, and we have to use that f term friends uh, rather loosely, because these people aren't really friends of Lily. They're just people who uh, offer Lily a chance to be seen, but when they don't need her, then they dismiss her. Now, as for themes, uh, of course, again, as in Jane Austen, new money versus old money. There's the morality and the wavering definition of right and wrong. Now, Lily, uh, through a, a charwoman, uh, 
she comes into possession of letters, love letters that Bertha Dorset wrote. And Lily could have blackmailed Bertha and used those letters, but she didn't choose to do that. Now, why did she decide not to do that? Was it a, out of fear that she realized Bertha was a powerful person and if she did this she would be blacklisted from society? Or was it her sense of right and wrong? Uh, so there's a lot to do with morality. Simon Rosedale is mistreated because of his religion. He's very wealthy and he's allowed to attend some parties, but he's never really one of the uh, the affluent. And he's thinking that if he marries a woman like Lily Bart, she draws attention by her beauty. He would have the money to give her uh, the right ro uh, wardrobe, and then he would be able to socialize. Is that his thinking? Or was he more interested uh, in Lily's situation as she's dying? Did he show true concern? So uh, Edith Wharton has written this novel with a lot of detail, with a lot of symbolism, and the characters are not always all right and all wrong. Uh, although there is a lot of wrongness uh, done, that's for sure. Now, the instability of society during the Gilded Age. We are leading up to the stock market crash. So uh, we know that definitely the, there's going to be a lot of people who lose their money. What happened was the, the old money people, the people who uh, were living on their investments and their inheritances, uh, they were spending too much money, just as Sir Walter Elliot did in Persuasion. And they had to bring in new financial sources. So as Sir Walter Elliot looked to people who had the new money, and in that case it was the military, and uh, Admiral Croft could rent out that uh, huge hall and give Sir Walter Elliot more money, these people instead looked to the New York stock market. And they were going to find that you know, and in 1929, that fell apart. So this is an interesting novel. We see what's going to happen, and we can look back at history, and we know the full story. So as we read this novel, it's very interesting to see uh, what's happening to the money. We definitely see the unfair distribution of wealth. We see that charwoman, the one who sells those letters to Lily, uh, she's scrubbing away, you know, at the at the stairs while Lily uh, is going up to have this clandestine meeting with Lawrence Selden. Uh, there's religious discrimination, Simon Rosedale. That's an interesting part of the novel. And there's a lot of research on that. You can read how Edith Wharton was criticized for the way she uh, treats certain classes of people. And obviously you have a lot of betrayals of, of friendships. Now the plot isn't as, uh, quite as easy, I think, to understand as perhaps uh, persuasion or uh, the dead or death of Ivan Illich. Lily is in various places. We have Lily in New York. We begin by her missing a train. She's on her way, her way to a house party outside of Manhattan. She spends time with Lawrence Selden before meeting Perry Grice on the train. Now, he is shy and unworldly. He's easily shocked. Um, he's does not see how a woman would gamble and lose money. You know, he's, he's just shocked by some of Lily's behavior. She tries to cover it up because she sees him as a potential suitor. At the party, Gus Trinner offers to invest Lily's dwindling bank account. So that's why she eventually owes him $9,000. She doesn't understand that he's putting the money into the stock market and you can win or lose. Lily buys Selden's love letters. The, those would be the letters that Bertha uh, and Selden wrote, uh, but she does not use them to blackmail Bertha Dorset, who could help Lily's deteriorating situation in society. We know that Carrie Fisher is the one who steps up and helps her. 
Now, Lily in Monte Carlo, after things don't work out in New York, she gets a chance to tour the Mediterranean with Bertha and George Dorset. Uh, she's only there because Bertha is having an affair with Ned Silverton, and she thinks that uh, her husband will be distracted by Lily's be uh, beauty. However, when George announces his plans to divorce and Bertha blames Lily, then uh, Bertha just dismisses Lily. She can no longer be on the yacht, so she's stranded, has no money. Uh, this is a huge problem for her. And the two women are both in love with Lawrence Selden. So we have uh, three women, because Gertie Farish also is in love with Selden. Uh, three women who appreciate Lawrence Selden. And it's ironic because he's a, a member of the working class. He works as a lawyer. He doesn't have a lot of money, but still he is the one who fascinates the women. Now, uh, Lily does find her way back after she's thrown off the yacht. She finds her way back to New York. She returns to the Fifth Avenue apartment to attend her aunt's funeral. But she finds that for all practical purposes, she's been disinherited. She's not going to get all that money. She's not going to get the Fifth Avenue uh, apartment to live in. Instead, she gets $10,000. Well, she already owes $9,000 uh, to George Dorset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, she owes that to, to Gus Trinner. Now, Bertha has spread rumors, making it impossible for Lily to count on her old friends. Carrie Fisher finds Lily jobs as a companion, but this fails, as does her work as a hat maker. She wants to love Lawrence Selden, but he is not affluent. She has no money. So Simon Rosedell rescinds his marriage proposal and Lily ultimately dies of a drug overdose. So in this story, we have a uh, aging beauty, an aging socialite with no money, living off of the uh, goodness and kindness of an aunt who really does not respect the way Lily lives. She's on her way to a house party. She takes a little side trip to Lawrence Selden's apartment. She sees Perry Geis, Geis on the train, tries to connect with him. Uh, at the party, Gus Trinner offers to help Lily with the finances, but it ultimately she loses that uh, uh, money because it's the stock market. She has a chance to get out of this, perhaps by blackmail, using letters that Bertha Dorset wrote. Uh, but she chooses not to do that. Instead, she goes with the Dorsets to Monte Carlo. There's a disagreement. She's thrown off the yacht. She comes back to New York and finds that her aunt has died, uh, leaving her for all practical purposes with no inheritance that would finance a lifestyle for her. A new friend, a new money friend, Carrie Fisher, temporarily finds her work as a companion. When this fails, she tries to be a hat maker. She wants to see her love with uh, Lawrence Selden as being a way out, but he just couldn't keep her in that same social class, and that's not acceptable. Uh, she decides maybe Simon Rosedale, the Jewish uh, entrepreneur, uh, that might be a, a way out, but he takes back his marriage proposal because she's no longer wanted in the social circles that he wants to travel in. So he sees her as being a liability rather than an asset. He does feel sorry for her. He has more human kindness than the other characters, but he still is goal-oriented. He's worked very hard as an entrepreneur to be allowed in these circles, and he doesn't intend to give it up, even for a woman like Lily. Lily sees no way out, so she dies of a drug overdose. And there is a child who is a comfort to her as she is dying. Now, symbolism, uh, Edith Wharton is, is like the other classic authors. Her words mean so much, so you have to do a lot of research on this. Obviously, money is a symbol. Wealth is the major symbol in the novel. The characters are judged by how much money they have inherited as opposed to how much they can earn. 
clothing is symbolic. The apparel that characters wear determines their, so, uh, their status in society. It is the symbol of their affluence or their lack of it. Americana, uh, that's what Perry Grice is obsessed with. And Americana represents the limited minds of those who have inherited wealth and thus are not forced to earn, earn money to maintain their places in society. They can buy uh, things that represent America, but they're not really interested in working to improve it and to prevent this stock market crash that's coming up after the novel ends. And the point of view and writing style, it's a third person narrator. It's a reporter of events. The uh, narrator is not inside the story. It's as if uh, he or she is a journalist recording the details of uh, the years leading to Lily Bart's death. Edith Wharton uses authentic details from her own affluent background to draw a grim picture of a society destined to crash in the future, the 1929 stock market crash. Because of its obsession uh, with wealth and social status, there's no way out for these affluent people who are desperately trying to figure out how they can continue not working but going to their parties, buying their uh, clothing, and their, uh, now they're buying vehicles. Uh, it's become too much for them to afford. And this is a, a, a writing style that emphasizes American realism. Construction of a society in a true-to-life manner, emphasizing the flaws of that society and the unfair distribution of wealth. Now, uh, please don't forget that the recommendations for further study folder will help you start your research this week. You do have to have at least uh, one direct quote from the literary work and at least one from um, a literary expert in the four discussion posts that you write each week. And there are many different sources. The ones in the uh, recommendations for study folder uh, are just a, a small sample of them.